Uh, we're going to talk about React and Meteor and Ionic. I only uh, started looking at this because um, I see there's a lot of articles coming out about React at the moment. Seems to be the new cool thing to play with. So I thought, uh, seeing as I'm a cool person, I should check it out. Uh, so um, I, I'm not going to pretend to be a React expert because I think it's quite involved. So uh, there's some really good tutorials out there and I thought I'd go through one. And by going through the tutorial, hopefully some of it will sink in uh, over time, or you know, I might have to revisit it a few times. But uh, if you want to follow along and kind of go through this tutorial together and try to get like this app working, so this this is a quick couple of slides on what these guys say their, their systems are. So React on their own page says you know it's just a simple JavaScript library for UI, Meteor. You all kind of all know what that is. And then Ionic, if you've not heard of it, is this uh, beautiful open source front-end SDK for building a hybrid mobile app. So it's kind of like a right once deploy anywhere type of solution uh, built on top of PhoneCat, I think. So this Ionic is uh, trying to build native apps with some web layers, like this kind of phone no, it's, uh, phone gap thing. It's not native, uh, it's, yeah, it's on top of PhoneCat. So it's, uh, it's a my understanding. If anyone thinks I'm saying the wrong thing, then feel free to tell me. So it's, it's a mobile app running in a browser. Yeah, not it's, on the browser. it's not an app. Not on the browser. It's yeah. a yeah. app. It's yeah. pretending that it's uh, that is a native app, app, app. But it's not actually a native app. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not React Native, which is another thing. Yeah, which kind of is kind of like a native app. But I'm not yeah, sure React is native. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Okay, so why do you want to learn React? Because, like I said, Google Trends is telling us that this thing is going up, and so if you're looking for a job, you probably should learn it. <laughs> um, out of interest, Meteor is kind of doing pretty well, well too, so uh, it goes back a bit further this one, but since um, February 2012, it's kind of been on the ascendancy and the whole uh, so I think last month it touched 100 on the Google Trend chart, which means it's the most popular it's ever been last month in terms of search. Okay, so practical walkthrough. Uh, I said the disclaimer before, I'm not a React developer, so some of you I'm sure know more than me, so feel free to tell me if I'm saying something which is incorrect. And so I'm copying this from... Did you show the video? Sorry? <laughs> okay. Well, oh, you want to get to here? Okay, yeah. so I've got a bit.ly link. If you want to follow along the presentation, uh, if you go to bit.ly slash meteor sg dash mri dash one. That's one. That will give you cool. the first. And then we just change one to two. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be the gist of the, uh, of the article. And then if you want to follow the actual original uh, page where we're copying this tutorial from, it's at the top here. So this is the, an article that sparked this off, uh, this guy called Sam Korkos, and he's building this uh, app, mobile app with Meteor React and Ionic, and uh, this is what stage one looks like, so we'll, we'll go through this. Okay. Yes, so, like coding. Okay, so I think the uh, first thing we do need to do is create a new Meteor app. So if you just do your regular Meteor create app name, can you see that? Not really. Do that. There you go. Who 
Who's actually following along there? Just so I know. It's not just me talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Uh, so there was a meteor kind of spike at the end of the year, which is just one oh, really? graph completely. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I guess that wasn't the same meteor that we talk about. You end up meteor, end right? End of meteor? Meteor JS. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's better. Thank you. Well, there may have been a meteor in Thailand. It was one yeah, 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 exactly, because it's just a like, versus flat. You can't see that. Okay, so we've got a new app. Uh, it's just a basic template app. Uh, Meteors, if we go into that, we can run our Meteor app. And it will do our regular stuff. Uh, okay, now if you're following along, that's step one. So, step two. We just need to create some template directories here. Hmm. So, create the directories. Client, client components, client styles, lib and server. Oh, done. Oh, you done already? Okay. Uh, and we can just uh, create some empty files. Okay. Huh? That's step three. Just create some empty files. I'm going to do anything for now. And then we can start out our text editor. Can I ask questions? Probably going on. Sorry? Can I ask questions? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what's the difference between the browser file options and JS? You can add them next. Yes, so this part is. I'm not an expert on browser file. If someone is, then uh, maybe they can help with this. Hmm. So I know you add like the packages in Browserify using the options. Yeah. But I haven't seen the Browserify JS used before. Is it like a, a way to map stuff in a global namespace or something like that? I think it's a way. It's it's. I think it's to do with the fact how to incorporate other <coughs> packages and other okay. external functionality right. um, into your Meteor app. Um, the yeah. Yeah. Does anybody know more about Browserify? I'm sure some note people can know. What was the question? Uh, does anyone know more about how Browserify works and what it, what it does? Um, I've got like a high level understanding of it. Okay. So basically when you write code in Node.js, you can import files from other places by doing var something equals require something. So the require function is not available in the browser side. So Browserify tries to fill in this gap by sort of defining a required version in the browser right. so that your code that's written for Node.js can also run on the browser. Okay. So you kind of like you write a you write a code once and you can use it on both environments. Right. Okay. okay. So it gives you client side yeah. access to the Okay, so step five, we add browser file and a few other packages. Uh, Some 
Control Section and for Browser Five. Step Six. Yes. Okay. For this, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So step seven, we uh, set up the browser five file. This allows us to then use React Router on the client side. We edit the packages.json file. Yeah, 
should be nothing there at the moment because I ripped out all the default detail stuff. Okay. If you're on the same point, I am. Okay, so. So then we can define our first component, React component, in the app body file. So. Meteor has now these JSX files. So the strange thing about the, the uh, React stuff is that you'll see this HTML and JavaScript together, which I was always taught was a bad thing. Because I'm quite old. And that was uh, <laughs> generally what you were told many years ago is that putting your JavaScript and HTML together was actually not a good thing, separation of concerns. Um, exactly. Yeah. But then I. Interestingly, I read an article, I think it was yesterday, about, um, if you remember when we split JavaScript and HTML before, it was actually a real nightmare, because you could have jQuery in another file somewhere, or JavaScript in another file. You had no idea by changing you know, something in your HTML that actually is going to affect some JavaScript somewhere else, and vice versa. So, what this guy was arguing is that it's better to actually separate your concerns by functionality rather than language, which makes a lot more sense. About it. So knowing that your JavaScript, you know, that is to do with one part of your template or your part of your view is all together with the actual view itself means you're a lot less likely to fall into some you know, horrible mess later on. So it's, uh, I'll try to put a link to that. Like always, quite a, quite a good article to read. I think that's not one of the things that what's his name? The guy who created React. Uh, Peter, Peter. I mean, he didn't create Rack, he, he was the team to create Rack. So one of the things they said is that we coupling behavior anyway, because we're adding all these fake classes to our HTML elements, and then we're searching for those fake classes in jQuery, which is even, it's very hard to follow. You can, like, you have a class, you don't know if this is a class, or if it's some magical JavaScript class which you can't remove, because if you do, behavior will be gone. There's this decouple magic. Is that a video? Yeah, this, uh, his presentation will be totally made up, I think. Oh, okay, well, I think it was a Pete Hunt, right? Uh, Pete Hunt? Pete Hunt, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's what I want. Okay, so that's our uh, app loading component. Uh, then we'll then add a app not found component, which again is pretty much what it says. So step four is we add a home component for the home page. So all these are doing are basically these are setting up uh, the views for each of the, the main pages in our app. Yeah. It's all React files. Oh. Yes, this is all React. <coughs> This is what is uh, returning all those. Like earlier, you had shown that uh, image where uh, you saw the screen, and then on each one you click. Like if you click on one uh, thing, then it show you home, right? Uh, yes, exactly. Okay, and yeah. So, so you'll you'll see that now in a minute when the thing yeah. catches up. So this this home section here down here. Basically, what, what React is going to do is when you go to the home page, it will then use this to render the home page. Okay. Uh, and then when you go to the not found page, this is what React's going to put on the screen. So, whereas in uh, normal Meteor applications, you'd have you know, a template or something, um, so you don't have that kind of concept anymore with React or replacing that whole place template. How so. does it know that it has to render the app not found or so in a minute we're gonna to go to the routing and then we'll okay. set up the routing so it will know which view to render or which URL. Um, just the home page, we don't got the settings page. That. And another page. So these are all basically the same thing. Uh, it's slightly different text. So this is the part where we've got our routing in the app body of JSX. So here, 
So here we're actually saying, we're putting in some roots here. So we're saying the uh, settings page here. Oh, sorry, it's using, it's using the links. Bigger. Bigger? Sure. Yeah, those are the links in the toolbar. Yeah, so these are the links in the toolbar. Um, it's saying, go to this page. Here's the other page. And then we have our React root handler down here. And then, sorry, these are the routes here. So again, we have a router.jsx file rather than a router.js file, which we normally have. So these actually define the routes, routes. Um, so this, answers, this is a question it's like, okay. So if you go to home, um, this is the URL, and this is the handler you need to render that page. This is, a, this is for the other page, this is for the settings page. And this is for a learning page, and this is for a app found page. And then we say, when we at Meteor starts up, let's set up all these routes, routes, um, for the application. Uh, one thing you might find is that you have to run Meteor a couple of times. Uh, it's to do with... Can, can you make the, the bottom line? Oh, this one. This one the, If you're not forced, you can actually change the path, you have flexibility there. Over here? Yeah. You're not forced to use the same name, right? You can, you can say instead of other, you can say whatever. Oh, you can say whatever. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever pages you've got yeah. set up. Yeah. Um, I didn't say the part. So here we have our. No, it's, it's that. So we've got our home page, we've got a settings page, we've got an other page. So that's basically set up the few different routes. So you see the URL. run that we want to on um, iOS. Did you add the uh, Yeah, I'll do that now. i add that from iOS. People managed to follow along? So the app platform iOS is that React? Is that no, that's Meteor. That's Meteor's yeah. 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 yeah, I think that came out in, um, that's version 1, they added that. Yeah. So you can add Android as well. Windows? No, thanks. Windows Phone? Yeah. Is that the quarter one? Yeah. 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 yeah, so now what we can do to actually Meteor run iOS. The standard video tutorial that's that, right? It does, I think it does now. Yeah. I think after version one, it added. Yeah. I just started three years ago, but I haven't seen But then again, I wouldn't be interested in more so. yeah, it's, it's a part of the video tutorial. Okay. There's one that we think about how we can run this tutorial on an app. Just keep the running if you come out of it. But it's just a bit slow, I found. Okay. I might, I might give up on that. Uh, okay. This takes a little bit of time. So this is a uh, building with it. Yeah. The background is probably doing a lot of stuff, right? Let's do all four or five, three parts. Maybe we'll just do part two and then we'll see how many more still. Wait.
you should have installed the plugins. Multi, multi meetup series. <laughs> I thought the more people would follow along. Sorry, right, Cameron. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I killed them all. No, you killed them all? They're probably all. They're all trying to learn functional programming. Oh, See, okay. all the people that say yes, they never show up. That's it. Ah, they just come for the burritos, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, See, that last confession. <laughs> okay, so stage two, we're going to add some data into our app. So let's, let's see how we do that in React. Okay, so in client components home, so our home page here, we need to add a mixin and a get meteor data function. So from my understanding is uh, this mixin. Oh, there it is. In, uh, it's a little my phone. Um, our mixin is a way we get data from from into React. From my understanding, and get meteor data basically establishes what what data is accessible to our render functions later. So we'll just leave the placeholder for now without actually much in here. Um, okay. And another package for some fake data, which is quite cool, it's called DigiLord Faker. If you ever need fake information, fake users, fake dummy stuff, dummy like avatars. It's a bit like the anti-fake. Anti-fake, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there. Is there. <laughs> it took a while, but it's done. Just well, rename it iPhone 6 Plus and you're really ahead. Yeah, so 6, 6 Plus S. Is that all that? We're ahead of time. So, yeah. so we got our app, we got our other. We didn't have to do anything special for to do it to make that happen. Um, Okay, so we've got a fake, uh, fake data yes. package. But is this, is this uh, still not uh, native UI, right? It's not, so these apps are not native, they're, they're on phone app. I mean, they will show up as an icon on your, on your iPhone. So yeah. what's the purpose of... Press the phone button. Yeah. Since this is not a very good experience, what's the purpose of this? Right. So you see, it does create this. Yeah, I understand. Yes. Oh yeah, but it's all a question of time and money, right? So if you have time to hire ten native developers and money, so that's a big fact. Because it depends how complex you use it. It depends how complex you use it to say this. Well, like for simple form, yeah, like I understand. Yeah, I, I use phone gap before, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is not Yeah, it may not be phone gap. There are also other choices. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this is phone mm -hmm. gap underneath. Yeah, well, phone gap was an abstraction layer between your JavaScript mm -hmm. and your API. Well, Ionix will give you this nice interface with the heap of transitions. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to the interface, make sure you can go transition mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like yeah. native. Mm -hmm. So, like, it wouldn't be the same as if you just playing around. Mm -hmm. There is one more alternative to phone gap. I can't remember the name of it. There are small ones. Titanium. Titanium? I we're going to use Ionic. Yeah. Ionic is yeah. not really an alternative. I think it's on top of it. Yeah, that's the uh, yeah. Yeah. And Then there was I mean, another there was one they presented at TalkJS uh, about one and a half years ago. For it was Cordova, but I think that got rolled into Phone Gap. Uh, I think one was Apache and one was someone else's. Or Adobe. Or something. Cordova, Phone Gap. They're both the same thing now, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think one used to be Apache or something. One was Adobe. Uh, it's an open source project. It's open source. Adobe, spun it off as open project and now it's called Apache Cordova. Okay, so we'll add some data in. So if we can just create an empty collection file. And then we'll add our regular new Mongo collection. Yeah. And then we'll just use this new DigiLord Faker package to create 25 new users. And now we can actually access this fake data in our, in 
in our view for us. So for our home page, we want to display these 25 fake users. So we go to client components home. Now get me to your data. We just add users my data dot find dot fetch. Okay. And then the view. This render function. So just copy out the render. And that will just see what that's doing. So this render function is using uh, ES6, I think it's let, let, let syntax uh, to display, go through the list of users and display the avatar, the name, and the email. users. The one strange thing that I found is our mobile app. I couldn't get the avatars to display. Ah, it's a casual thing. You need to add like permissions for each image. Okay. They, they have, they have managed their own. Also, how do you? You need to add permissions for the folder, which is your folder where you're storing it, or the URL. Uh, it doesn't load anything by default. So what do you add the permissions? Uh, uh, Cardova options, for some Cardova things. Okay. There's like a Cardova settings file somewhere. Uh, I don't know where you find it. It's only a pointless, but never in the documentation. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Stanley, you spent hours on finding a solution. <laughs> it wasn't in the tutorial, I guess. Yeah. I guess he's done it lots of times, he doesn't have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Until you find it. Yeah, right. Good soul has there. done it before. And <laughs> What's the image path anyway? Where's it coming from? Uh, it's coming from the IMG. Um, yeah, but where's, where's the source? Because you use fake, right? Yeah, so it's fake. Fake is probably coming from somewhere. Of course, it's from the. Uh, yeah, exactly. Probably some external service is calling it from. Probably some S3 container or something, I guess. Yeah, it's pulling from my Yeah. So it's a, probably it'll just expose or allow external fetch. In fetching of external files, yeah. Probably some paths in here. Yeah. Security. Security, man. Um, Okay, that's the end of section two. So, is, is anyone else going along still? Carry on section three? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Okay, that's good. Okay, so section three. Okay, we're going to add a few modals and some tabs. So, normally with an iPhone app, we only have a couple of tabs at the bottom here on the side. So, we can add a few here. So, again, let's go back to our app body. Let's add a new function get default props. <laughs> I'll just copy this whole section. Replace our body with this. Now we have some tabs being defined here. And we'll also display the tabs up here. Okay, so, so with the tabs, we're gonna just see if that's okay. okay. So we've added our tabs here. So we've got a couple of tabs down here now. The yeah. app. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Let's try and do that. Yep. Magic 
So it's just a config in the meteor or? Yeah, it would this file, uh, the mobile config file, when you say allow this URL to get the score. Let's change the meteor 1.02. So every URL you're accessing outside of your app, you need to put a rule for it that you allow. You can put wildcards. Yeah, you can do wildcards, that's what it is. S3, Amazon, whatever. Just allow anything. Okay, so for the modals to be triggered off those um, those tabs, we need to create a new file, which is client components ion modal JSX. This is where the magic comes from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to put it inside the gate. He didn't make it clear. Inside the counter to it, but not the inner to it. Yeah, inside the outer to So just move it uh, one line up before the closing gate. Because yeah. you can't have, in Rack, you, can, you need to have a root. And oh, okay. As soon as you have, if there should be just only one part, you can have multiple elements. See, I knew there's more people in there than you more around. Okay, and then finally, we need to have an on click event handler for our tabs. Yes. 
I think the only line that changes here is the uh, AH3. To get it through the app store. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Steve Jobs would uh, be swearing at me. Okay, so make it a bit nicer, we can have some transitions to that. We're going to be in with a link to their design yeah. guys. And that's it, what they're here. Send it to join From them. <laughs> so we can add this React CSS transition. The line at the top of the app body from oh, <laughs> this transition tag around our Moodle and a bit of CSS, the SCSS file. When the modal comes in, we'll just make the background a bit darker so you can see it. So in the iron modal, we can see the component. Just add this backdrop component. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our component. Finally, we'll just add a conditional, say, whether to show the backdrop of the modal to there. So in the app body.jsx. Of the transition. We have the backdrop check. And now, we do that. Ah, it's a bit nicer. Mm -hmm. We get a slightly nicer little box coming up. transition code is very complicated. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like embedded on the click handlers on sites where I found it. Mine doesn't have a transition. <laughs> what is it? it just shows the scrub and it stops here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean the web the web one's fine. So that works fine. Oh yeah the web one's fine so yeah the web one should work fine. And if you click on tab what happens? Click on a tab, it should bring up the photo on the bottom. Oh, okay. And dark the background. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's kind of half the tutorial of the React stuff. Maybe you learned something today. <laughs> Maybe you didn't. I'll leave it for, as an exercise for the reader. <laughs> Follow up. Okay, so um, just a couple more things I think just to mention. We have a, there is a global hackathon happening, Meteor Hackathon, on the 10th to the 11th of October. So all the, a lot of cities around the world are going to have a hackathon that weekend and um, it's starting to be announced and promoted. There are some prizes for top overall submission, top five. Uh, most innovative, best Meteor and Internet of Things application, best game. This one's quite interesting. Best app under 100 lines of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can come up with some <laughs> Ramda.js magic. 
変に言うと、割と、スポンサーのハスケを。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。<laughs> Can you Skype from that? I can't remember that from you. Okay. But maybe、um, I'll put a message on the Facebook page and then we'll find out numbers of people who might want to join up. We can have up to four people in one group, so we can have more than one group if you want. And.、Um, if we don't have enough people, can you speak with Sydney guys? Sorry? If we don't have enough people, I can speak with Sydney guys and you can just. Yeah, or you know, I know the Hong Kong guys as well. So,、uh, at the same time zone in Hong Kong as well. Oh, yeah, Sydney's like three hours. Sydney's got, Australia's got quite a few meteor guys around as well. Yeah. So they've got the whole Percolate studio down there.、Uh, They're all in Melbourne. Sydney doesn't have a studio. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, so, yeah, the rules are quite straightforward. It's obviously got to be built with Meteor, less than 24 hours, one to four people.、Uh, you can start coding before the hackathon, but you just have to make sure everything that you're, you're doing is public.、Um, you own your own code, which is quite nice afterwards. And then, if you want to be eligible for the prize, you need to show your repo, you need a video demo. So, we might need to ask Michael for his help. And,、uh,そう。It does say something about、uh, yeah, not being too sneaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 and they specifically say that you can't just publish something which is only useful for your company as a package and then just like, oh, can they get the price?、Well, I think it'd be fun. I think,、uh, I think the Meteor IoT thing is quite interesting. I don't know if anyone's done the IoT stuff. Yeah, I've, I've messed around with some IoT stuff. Does, Meteor, do, does anyone have something? <laughs> Sorry? We need the device. I've got some devices. Oh, cool. Can you bring them? Like a Spark 4 and a w a y l i k e we know. Two l e d s c o l I can do the LED thing. Maybe need to step up again from there. Fire、um, LEDs. What else?、Uh, so, anybody got any questions about Meteor that they would like to ask the community here? Try to help. We have our Meteor Clinic session. Doctor is、yeah, ready. <laughs> Patience, any patience? Well, I, I posted one which is still not answered. So. Do, you to, do you want to ask a question? To, to, to Sorry? Do you want to ask a question? On top of that. Do you, want to, do you want to ask a question? To which question do you want to ask? First, it's basically about because I'm using two different apps, right?、Uh, I split up one job queue, which is on one server, and then the client facing app on another one. And I want to ensure that. When I'm sending an API call, sending data between them,、mm-hmm. that the data always reaches 100% the other side.、Mm-hmm. So, obviously, 99% of the time it's going to happen, but I have to prepare for the, whatever the server has been down, or has been updated right now, or has been too busy, or whatever. And actually, I don't get a status call 200 back in order to ensure that automatically it's been rescheduled. Um, so, Rick and I we actually、uh, played around a bit with the collection, which is called the、uh, job. Collection v s i v s i job collection that's been pretty good, but I'm thinking like maybe that's been too massive to install, and maybe there's a shortcut to do it easier. Than it. Why do you?、Um, Next, we came up with the, the ABS、uh, Lambda servers, right? Which is、uh, interesting as well, especially as I, as I saw, it's been free for、uh, 1 million events and 3.2 million. Uh, seconds per month, so that, that definitely is, especially when you want to get your application in your life, I think that gets you started quite well. But, but your code needs to be functional. You can't have any state in those Lambda functions.、Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so if anyone has any kind of easy idea to Which do. Which one initiates the. Oh, both of them will do.、Uh-huh. Both of them will do, but、uh, usually. so.、Uh, The client facing app will basically only react on the fact that there is a new user 
and then in regular instances it will actually, because it's a, as you know, is a aggregating data from various kind of uh, services, or the microservices, and, and it will just push it over to the worker, and the worker will do all the hard work and just push the results back. So it's the mostly. worker meter to? Yes. Uh, why using HTTP then? Confusion with the meter call? Oh, it's, sorry, I did mention it's, it's two separate databases, it's not one database. Yeah, well, you can two still. Two separate servers. That doesn't matter, you can still do meter call over to different server and two DDP. Yeah, yeah, DDP will automatically yeah. repeat. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure about methods. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's worth the same as methods. So if you're using DDP, it will repeat, and there's actually a hard way you can just like uh, disconnect. Then you do a bunch of stuff, you reconnect, and it just spawns your server. Okay, so I can do it in DDP. Yeah, so there's, uh, what's his name, Bulletproof Meteor uh, from Aronoda. Yes. And he has an example for microservices uh, communication there. I'm not sure they have a subscription. And he actually demonstrated a specific example there where you okay. you got the connection and you do something and you bring up the connection back and it yes. posts all the data without you doing yeah, anything. That sounds like the best solution so far because that's exactly what I'm interested in also because of uh, security and privacy. I think that's, right. that's, that's fully documented in the DDP section of the yeah. full meter rate. So does it say it's really good Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it, it's specifically designed for the DDP connections yeah. between meter apps or between a non-meter and a meter app. Okay, that's cool. Thanks. Right now, how do you do it? API call. Yeah. So yeah. you then check in You send it. the job or? Well, I send some data, then on the other side it's been inserted in the, I send it to the backend, and the backend is the only one so that's actually allowed to write. Your problem is that if you, you send the data and you do not get the response, right? Yes, because it's just like it's like our mail system, right? You just put a letter, stamp on it, put it in the box, and we always say Singapore Post is going to deliver, right? Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks later we say, like, where haven't you paid your bill? Or oh, I put a check in the post, right? What about you do the other way around? You, you pull data instead of pushing. Yeah, that means I regularly have to ask if there is some new data. Yes. yes. So if you're using DDP, you don't. Sorry? Can if you're using DDP, yeah. so you can connect with DDP to other meter app. Yeah. And you don't need to pull because it will automatically modify yeah, your Yeah, that's why I like your idea yeah. the most. Well, excuse me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah like, as soon as there is magic in, in, in happening, then I like it. But that, that actually is better than. Because uh, the problem is. If you call meter, do meter call, and your service goes down for a long period of time, then you just spam it. As soon as it goes up, you spam it with like 10 calls and it goes down again. If it came down under load, yeah. you're going to kill it again as soon as it. Uh, so there might be some flooding that can happen when it's yeah. starting. Yeah, so. Uh, so. The, the other question that I posted is about uh, stale sessions, and I'm not sure if that is still existing. So I found somebody putting up a package that is handling stale sessions. So we, everybody puts up a lock out there, right? But we know in reality the user never uses it, right? Mm -hmm. And the question is if you have a lot of concurrent users and, 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 and lock in and unfortunately never lock out, and that is going to add up actually. Is is that still a problem in Meteor? What we have right now 1.0.3, or is that because the package was being written when it was still 0 0.8? So I'm not sure about that. Anybody knows? Because again, that's flooding the server with stuff that is not necessary. So do we create like a session? Because I thought session is not stored in database. Sorry? So no. the sessions are not stored in database, right? The users stored and then the session ideals will cover with this stuff. So what stale session means? What does it mean is that, that the user can like log in when the session is expired? Um, well the point that he brings up is that uh, another user can impersonate a user. Oh wow, really? Yes. So that's more again a security problem. Session mm -hmm. hijacking. Yeah. By doing what? Sorry? By doing what? Well, I don't know how, but he just, ah. he just pointed out he's not doing you. 
<laughs> Pick a one to one. <laughs> that's, that's definitely uh, there's some generic security thing that I think came out in the last meter update. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's why I'm asking. It might be fixed and no longer necessary well, it, to do that. Uh, it basically said like any any meter app should be using SSL. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, just, it's very easy to just just, just the way you do the work for passwords. Ah, because otherwise you just listen for session to the session and you go in. You can read the article that your friend wrote. Sure. <laughs> So you wrote after the SSL, what you said. It gives a link to how you sniff the DDP connection very easily. Okay, so yeah, if you maybe you can post that, that would be yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But it seems quite easy to set up the SSL. Uh, because I, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, you, you start very, very small and you never think about all this stuff, <laughs> right? Unless you come to that and then you say, like, oh, I never thought what happens if the cover server is actually down. I never thought about hackers trying to steal my data. So. How can I just build it up and make it as difficult as possible? Because in the end, they can always hack. Mm -hmm. And if you delete your database, you want to limit whatever they can do. Okay. Anyone else got questions? Oh, this is. Any questions? Anyone who's used Meteor Kitchen? Um, this is the pay. Is it the pay package? No, it's, it's oh no, sorry. The pay package. Pay applications. There's one, uh, it's a Meteor, it, it allows you to build Meteor applications. Right, right. So there's a kind of form and things like that which you can fill, fill in and it generates a JSON file and then you run that program called Meteor Kitchen and it will build the app for you. I haven't tried it. Oh. Uh, I think I've heard of it, but I haven't tried it. Um, Sounds like the world of magic. <laughs> Sounds a bit like too yes. much. Magic on top of magic. <laughs> <laughs> Double down on magic. You, you can speak for about it in the next meetup. <laughs> yeah, try it and so, talk on it. Okay. Good. Um, okay, we're always looking for people to speak, so if you've got something to talk about in the next meetup, especially if you're new, it's nothing better than standing up in front of you know, people you don't know. And making a fool of yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend it. I do every time. Uh, so, and the other thing, we have Facebook, we have Slack, we have Meetup.com. Uh, Slack, we've got like 30, 40 people on Slack now. Yeah. So, usually it's like if you want to speak to someone in your time zone, maybe ask a question, you might get an answer hopefully from somebody, uh, which saves, you know, I found the media forums are still like, pretty quiet. Yes, that's um, my experience as well. Even though there's only four yeah. out of 34 or something available, I always, always get an answer here. I mean, today Maxine and Rick yeah. is very active there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's in the, uh, what is it called? The Meteor Forum. Meteor Learn Meteor JS properly and uh, the Code... Code Buddies. Code Buddies, which is uh, 600 people. There's also only four people at the same time. <laughs> and I hardly get an answer. Uh, but lots of questions, me. but nobody answers <laughs> yeah. it. So this, this is really... Yeah, so uh, the, I think the more people we get on, on there, also yeah. the better. And you know, like I said, we're all in the same time zone, so we must come up with ideas and like, ask questions, which is good. Um, what else? Uh, so if you want to join a Slack group, just send me an email or send somebody uh, your email address, and then we'll try to add you. Unfortunately, Ken and Ahmed are not here. We're the other two kind of moderators of the meetup. Uh, but send an email to me, or you can give me your email address. Like, Maybe you can do it like the code buddies, that, that somebody can go to a URL and just enter its email address and then everything is automated. Uh, I don't know how they did it, but I like it a lot more than just like, oh, like, how can I actually do it? Okay, he's here. It's a hero app. There's a hero app in this. Oh, oh right. that's right. Oh. Okay. Oh. Did you write that? No, no, no somebody wrote it. So it's cool. Yeah. Alright, we'll do that to make it even easier. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, that's kind of general chat. Pretty active, I guess, for rubbish stuff. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. So, uh, leave the building. Or... <laughs> you can't sleep there, but. You said that night, right? Don't you have an uproar? You sleep there. Practice for the hackathon.